Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to walk through most of the brushes inside of Blender, try to explain what they do and how they work. So, uh, when I'm talking in this video, of course, I'm referring to sculpting brushes in Blender, uh, rather than Vertex Paint or any of those other tools. But in sculpting mode, you can effectively simulate working with clay, except with 3D modeling. So to do that, uh, once you go into sculpt mode, you're going to have a series of different brushes over here that are available to you. Some of which more useful than others, but all of which are going to have some use at one time or another. So it's going to default you to sculpt draw, which is a very basic brush. Um, you can kind of think of it like any 2D brush that also kind of builds on top of itself. So it's going to actually add elevation. But when you do draw on your box or whatever actual object you're working on, it's kind of free form and how it kind of elevates things. So it's actually a very useful basic brush to go ahead and use. And just so you know, in order to actually get these lines to appear on basically something that has four vertices like this face, uh, you do need to enable den topo mode, uh, stands for dynamic topology. And by doing that, you can basically have it automatically create faces and vertices on the fly where necessary. So that's a very useful tool. Okay, so let's move on. An, a similar tool is clay. Um, it, it's kind of hard to see the differences, but it, it's less free form than the sculpt draw tool. So if we kind of add this here, uh, you can see it's a little bit blocky. So it's kind of like you took chunks of clay, uh, literally, and put them on your material. I would say it's a bit less smooth, but overall it's very similar. I do usually find that the sculpt draw tool is a little bit easier to put stuff on and you can always increase the strength to make it you know, more dramatic as you're working with it. Um, but the clay, it's just very similar. Uh, another tool is called blob. So kind of as the image would give you the idea of, um, this does add materials on, but it's much more circular rather than this kind of blocky clay. Uh, if, if we just create something that's a blob, it's going to kind of look like a giant zit, right? Um, so yeah, it, 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 it's like bubbles, bob, uh, a blob, whatever you want to call it. It's very cylindrical. Um, a tool I, I haven't actually used that much. I, I don't think it's that useful for sculpting humans or anything like that. Uh, but one that is, in a couple cases, is clay strips. So the idea here is um, you're basically drawing in a line, but this line, unlike Sculpt Draw, is going to be uh, very edgy on the sides. So I'll just draw and you'll kind of see what I mean. Um, and of course, uh, if we uh, increase the detail size, or decrease the detail size, rather, uh, you'll probably see a little bit more what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, it, it takes an area and it kind of elevates it, but in a way where it's really sharp on the edges. So one thing a lot of people seem to use this for is doing eyebrows. Of course, when you're actually doing an eyebrow, you'd probably... Okay, that's pretty weird when I go into the object. Anyway, you would zoom in a lot and you can... Well, let's see here. Yeah, something like that. And you draw an eyebrow on the face. And you can kind of see how already it sort of looks like an eyebrow. You might want to pinch that on the sides. I actually have, uh, I think I have symmetry enabled here. I guess that's fine. Uh, symmetry. Um, what happens to one side happens to the other. So you see I draw over here and it happens on the other side. In any case, uh, let's talk about the pinch brush. So pinch magnify. Uh, if you have like a corner and you want to make that be brought together, you can kind of pinch it together, make it a little bit sharper. Uh, I would say the difference between this and a crease is that it's a lot less dramatic. And the opposite of that, if I hold control down or toggle it to magnify, you can take one feature and you can try to bring it out or make it more exaggerated. So let's actually use a crease. Uh, generally, I use subtract for crease to make an indentation crease. Uh, the opposite of that would be you have a crease that pops up. Um, and we can magnify that with the pinch magnify tool. So going back here, you 
hold control to toggle between the selected one and the non-selected one. And hopefully we'll kind of be able to see it a little. Maybe if I boost up the back here. Okay, yeah, there we go. So we get down to a couple of these small faces and we kind of blow it out of proportion. So anything that exists on your model that you want to go ahead and exaggerate, magnifying that is going to uh, possibly be helpful there. So of course the opposite is pinch. So if we want to like take these edges and make them a little bit sharper, a little bit smoother, uh, the pinch tool isn't a bad option for that. Alternatively, we could crease this, make it more dramatic. Okay, that actually looks terrible, but um, you get the idea. So let's see, some other ones, uh, flatten slash contrast. Uh, usually you're just gonna use this for the flatten tool. Obviously it does what it says. Um, you have an area on your mesh and you want to flatten it out. It's the perfect tool for that. Uh, on, on the other hand, if you want something to really stand out, contrast, hold on. Okay, so if you have this selected, you don't wanna hit control because that goes back to flatten, but you can also use this in, kind of in a similar way to magnify to really exaggerate certain areas. So if you want to make it really, really obvious that there's this eyebrow here, it's uh, kind of creased in, you can use contrast for that. Um, okay, so let's see, grab. Um, so you have a corner of your mesh and it's slightly in the wrong position. Grab is one tool you can use for that. I find normally that it kind of knocks the actual shape of it out of place. So if you've already added a lot, then uh, like a lot of detail, then it's probably not gonna be a great tool to use. Okay, uh, let's, let's grab something like this. So you can grab vertices, faces, kind of move them around a bit. You can move them out a lot, but it's not exactly a smooth or elegant tool. If you do this to a complex mesh, something like a face, it's going to probably distort it quite a bit. Um, if you actually want to take something and kind of extrude it out without messing with the base face, you can use the snake hook tool. Uh, really good for things like fingers or toes. So we just kind of pull it out. So you have a starting point and you can just keep expanding it. Uh, yeah, of course, try not to get these floating vertices things. Um, that's not great. And we'd have to handle that in one way or another. Um, we might actually be able to get that fixed with the smooth tool. So this just takes whatever you have um, and it smooths it out and smoothing it out is going to remove detail. So if you use smooth on something like this, you can see it's like, oh, well, the crease is gone. Well, yeah, because it's kind of equalizing all of the heights, um, removing a lot of that contrast. Okay, so let's see, if we use this on this, it might get kind of weird. Uh, yeah, and you probably want to be careful about like accidentally smoothing your box there. If you have a shape that you don't want to knock out of um, basically its current shape. And one way you can do that is have front faces only checked. That way um, it's less likely you're going to accidentally affect other things. So if I kind of smooth this out here, uh, you can see it doesn't affect the box behind it, even though that was technically within the circle. Um, so yeah, sometimes you, you do get these weird little artifacts if you're trying to go too precise, like you can see this tiny uh, snake hook. It's just a really weird shape. Uh, sometimes you can smooth them out or inflate or deflate to kind of fix it a little bit. Um, speaking of inflate or deflate, it's kind of like blob, except um, way more dramatic and it's more focused on a single point. So if I kind of just inflate in a circle here, yeah, it's making uh, sort of like a spherical shape. And uh, this tool is really good for making things fatter too. So whatever you affect, it's going to kind of go out in all directions. You can see it's not just going straight up, but because it's spherical, um, it's kind of making it more like a ball, really good for breasts and that sort of thing. And deflate, if you want to make a really large indentation or you just want to reduce the width of anything, uh, this is a good tool too. Um, really good for like big changes or kind of like a crease, but that's more across the entire topology rather than in just one specific area. 
Um, let's see, F layer. So I haven't used this one too much, um, but it's kind of like sharply taking an area and making it pop out. So let's try to, okay, yeah. Let's try to do this on not an edge. Uh, so you can kind of see it, it just really makes it come out a lot and it would probably look a lot smoother if, um, I don't know, we had like in topo mode turned off and this was just a subdivided cube, something like that. But anywhere you need to kind of make pop out, uh, F layer is going to be really good for that. You can also subtract, of course, so... Yeah, exact opposite. Make something sink in a lot. Um, and by the looks of it, in this image, probably what they're doing is like using it on square faces or something like that, I imagine. Okay, so nudge tool, if you want to distort something, um, kind of smear it, this would be a good tool for that. I um, haven't actually found a real application for it, but you kind of nudge stuff around. Uh, you know what, I actually have used this a little bit. Um, it's kind of like using the grab tool, except a lot m less dramatic, and it kind of holds the uh, faces together a lot better. So you can kind of move a couple faces down while it still kind of maintains the overall shape. So if you needed to shape something like, let's say, an eyeball, that's actually pretty decent. Um, let's see, what else here? Okay, blob clay, clay strips, crease, fill, deepen. Um, this is really useful if, like, you have fingers and you have the gap between the fingers and you want to actually deep that. Um, stuff like that, where you just want to make something really sink in. So deepen, we can take this crease and kind of sink it in. Maybe we turn up the strength. You could also just use the crease and go further with this. But I guess this can be used for more than just uh, creases. Um, so yeah, fill, if we have like an area that is empty and we want to fill that up. Okay, this might work. So it kind of just takes this crevice, this gap, fills it up, kind of smooths it. Not the most useful tool, but uh, not too bad. Um, rotate. Very rarely have I touched this so far, but if you want to take some of the faces and twist them around, you can do that. Uh, that's basically the point there. I guess it's actually working at the vertice level, really. Um, yeah. Can no, you know what this might actually be good for? Like, if you have something sticking out. I, I should try this on, like, an arm. Uh, hmm. Maybe, yeah, may, maybe maybe you can apply it to an arm and kind of twist it um, to face the direction you need. I don't know about that, though. Um, and thumb. Thumb is very similar to the nudge tool, except I think it's a little bit more dramatic. So we can kind of take stuff and move it out, take stuff, move it out. So I guess the difference here is that the thumb tool uh, doesn't care much about the rest of the topology that you're not touching, but it just takes the faces that it has and moves them out of shape without kind of considering anything else. Also, the nudge tool, you kind of have to keep clicking um, rather than click, hold, and move to where you want it to be. It's more in tiny little increments. So, you know, I might actually like the nudge tool a little bit better there. And then the last one we um, haven't actually talked about yet, Scrapes, Peaks, uh, and Mask. Um, haven't actually tried this one, so let's just give it a shot here. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's kind of taking, I guess, these lines that are sticking out and... Making them stand out a bit? Um, hmm. You know, I'm not actually sure. I didn't mean to talk about this one in the video. Uh, yeah, hopefully you guys can kind of see what's going on here. Okay, so like, like it's making a sharp peak, so sort of like a mountain, and then I guess scraping is like the opposite? Huh, okay. A little hard to understand. Um looks like the tool that might be used for like mountains i don't know 
Okay, and then anyway, layer masks. Um, so when you are working on your sculpt and you don't want to actually affect everything at once, you can add stuff to a layer mask. So if we draw here, this black area basically becomes unchangeable until we remove the layer mask. So right now, um, let's say we want to rotate in here, but we only want to rotate this stuff. We don't want to rotate the layer mask. Well, now that we have the layer mask, it's not going to affect that. Okay, I have no idea what that's supposed to be, but <laughs> you get the idea. Um, yeah, and uh, you can also see that the layer mask works kind of in uh, steps. So areas can be partially layer masked, and then you can influence them a little bit. But in order for it to be completely unchanged, it needs to have that really dark black layer mask going on there. So be careful about that. Um, but layer masks, of course, are going to be useful if you're trying to change one area without changing everything else. So I think we've pretty much covered every tool here. Uh, yeah, I wish I could have, you know, talked a bit more about Scrape Peaks, but I'm sure you guys can figure that one out. And for the other ones, uh, those are probably the ones you guys are going to use more often anyway. So I've been Chris. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful. I'll be back with more in a few days with more Blender content. So... Hopefully I'll see you guys then and I will catch you guys later.